How are you doing? Good. I wanted to ask you, uh, Paul Johnson made a comment after the Virginia Tech game I thought was interesting. He said uh, that there was one play that uh, they were having success with, and he said basically they keep running it until the other team can, can stop it. Right. Um, when you're game planning, I mean, that seems like that's just completely reactive. Is that just something like in the game you do, or can you prepare for that during the week? Well, you know, I mean, you, you do your best to prepare for all the things you're going to see, right? But they do a great job of having uh, little subtle uh, tweaks and changes to things that they do offensively. I think Paul Johnson does an incredible job, especially with the run game. Um, and, he, I mean, what he said is, is spot on in terms of when they find something that they perceive as a weakness, they're going to keep trying to exploit it. It happened to us in 2015. Um, they found something uh, that they liked, and they ran it six plays in a row, and it's really kind of a helpless feeling uh, on our side because we can see we have an issue, but you can't get it communicated or you got to use timeouts. Um, so, you know, they'll just they'll keep going back to, to whatever they feel like they're having success with, and that's why we got to do a great job on the sideline making sure that whatever their tweak of the week is or, or their little subtle adjustment that they have, that we do a great job of coaching it up quickly, getting it fixed, and, and making sure that our guys understand what's going on. From a distance, it kind of, I guess it could be simple enough to say, if you can force them to put the ball on the ground, you can beat them. If you don't force them to fumble, it's really, really difficult. Is it that simple, or what else is there to it? It Generically, it, it is that simple, but it, it's a little bit more, uh, I look at it a little bit deeper than that. So they're a team that, we, we talk about possessions being really valuable when you play a team like this. It's going to control the ball and run the ball. So we're looking at anywhere between 10 and 11 possessions in the game. And we our thought is we got to get three stolen possessions or more to be able to have success. Stolen possession in our mind is either a, a takeaway, obviously, a three and out, which gets them off the field quickly, or a turnover on downs because they're, they're a team that likes to go for it on fourth down. So if we can get three or four of those in the course of the game, then we're stealing possessions for the offense and give us a chance. What's the toughest part about stopping the I think I think there's two things to it. One is that they're really good at it. I mean, it, that's they know it better than, than anybody else because that's that's their their bread and butter. I think number two is the simulation of it. You know, it's hard to prepare your team to play with the speed that the game is going to be uh, using scout guys because the triple option is unfamiliar to everybody within our program. Um, so simulating in practice is difficult, and then how well they execute it, it makes it difficult. Would it surprise you if they threw on the first play of the game? Would it surprise you? Well, in 2016 here, they threw on the first play of the game. Uh, I think they actually they threw on the first two out of three plays of the game here in 2016. So it wouldn't surprise me, but, um, you know, we'll be prepared for both. This is your fourth year seeing this. Has, does he change a lot of, of what he does from year to year? Uh, the core of what they do doesn't change a lot. Every year there's a little wrinkle that, that's a little bit different. So, you know, there's there's certain plays that I track through through the years that have showed up every year. There are some plays that only showed up in 15, there's some that only showed up in 16, some that only showed up in 17. So those were, you could tell obviously his wrinkles or he thought that there might be something there uh, that later on he decided that maybe wasn't. But, um, you know, so there's going to be those things that you got to adjust to on the fly, but the core principles of what they what they do, that they've been constant throughout. Larry said yesterday that when you have a lot of veteran guys up front and in linebacker, it's a little easier to prepare because they've seen it before live. But you kind of banged up up front. Chris got like 43 reps or something. The staff's the other day. You may have to play him some this week. How difficult is it to get a young kid like that first year in college kind of up to snuff facing an offense like this? I mean, that, that can be challenging. You know, we, ha we have a lot of guys that have played uh, against this offense now and, and within the, pretty much the same framework of the, our defensive system for three and four years. You know, the Cole Holcombs, uh, Dominique Ross is in his third year, John Smith. Um, you know, those guys have, have done a bunch of it. The, the D-line, a lot of the older guys obviously have done a lot of it. But Chris Collins, as you reference, you know, but that's one of the reasons we start working on them early. You know, this we didn't start to, you know, today. Um, we've been working on it for, for months, you know, little segments of, of time throughout the week or within fall camp. So um, hopefully, you know, that playing them this late in the season helps us because we've built some reps over the course of fall camp and through the season. But, uh, you know, obviously we got a lot of work to, to do to get some of the young guys ready. Have you dedicated, like, full days with the players to Georgia Tech in the fall camp or in spring? Because, I mean, Chizik spoke, spoke about doing yeah, that. Yeah, we, 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 we didn't dedicate full days, but we dedicated um, – 
four different practices in, in fall camp and then pretty much once a week since we've had segments of practice not full days to it but uh we've we've certainly had our attention on it you know for a long time do you like hate preparing for this offense or do you like enjoy no, the challenge I, or what's, I mean, what's no, you gotta, I, there's gotta be some feeling towards it no i enjoy it i mean because yeah. i feel like it's it's a playing chess with yeah. with a chess master you know what i mean so i love the fact that, that he he knows the offense better than anybody and he knows how he wants to um, try to attack us and, and i got 11 guys that i can kind of move around and and try to defend it the, be, the best that we can so I, I like the challenge from a from a schematic standpoint will you be up in the booth or? i will be down I'll okay be down. you've been down most of the season right? i've been down all season yep. who's yeah. up there looking at blocking schemes uh yeah. so right now coach adams and uh and coach baker up there with a couple of our gas gotcha. A lot of the talk about when you face an offense like this, the, the disciplines up front and, and really in the front seven. But in the secondary, when they're going up against a group that's not going to throw, but when they do, they, they kind of catch you off guard. What's the challenge with their discipline when they have to play the run so much, but they have to be aware that one time they may go deep? Yeah, I think it's just being able to maintain focus for long periods of time. You know, So you might go 8 to 10 to 12, 14 plays of consecutive run. And then all of a sudden they, they try a shot on you, and you got to just be focused and, and locked in mentally enough to keep your eyes where they need to be and, and, and read your keys and, and make sure that you're staying disciplined in coverage. I mean, I, that's how they, they get those big plays in the throw game is they kind of lull you to sleep and then they take a shot down the field. So, um, you know, we, we work hard. I mean, you know, I don't know if it's unique or not, but we do seven on seven um, preparing for these guys too, just because the, uh, the throw game uh, is unique enough that. You gotta work it. So, um, you know, our, our guys, you know, ha have done a good job, you know, preparing for the throw, and and uh, I think we'll be be ready for both both the, the rushing attack and the what throw. Can you, what can you say about Trey Morrison's play this year? He's getting some really high grades with PFF yeah. and things like that. Yeah, the uh, he, he has. I mean, he's done he's done a lot of good things. I mean, for a freshman to come in and play nickel for us, uh, you know, and do it pretty seamlessly, um, you know, he's done a great job. Now, it doesn't mean he's done it perfectly. You know, I. I always find the, the grading of the PFF kind of interesting because how do you know what he was supposed to be doing, right? So, um, you know, so sometimes my grades don't reflect exactly how that goes, but um, I assume that's just on production and, and the pairing that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. But um, he's done a nice job, and uh, um, I'm, I'm really pleased with his development. I think he's going to be a good player over the long run. How would you say with the PFF? How accurate is that? I don't know. I like, love the stuff. I mean, I think it, I, I I don't know what the metric is that they use to be able to grade, but um, you know, a lot of times, I mean, obviously there's there's some correlation, but like what what your assignment was on the given play, I mean, it would be hard hard to know that from outside. So I, I don't. But I honestly, I I think it's great that some of our guys have graded out well, and, and I think some of our guys have done done well. I mean, I pay attention to it, you know, just to see what the thoughts were. But um, I don't I don't really know how how they know if. If they were doing what they were supposed to be doing. Like, <laughs> but anyway, I mean, that's. Thank you, JP. Thank you.